How does the magnetic field of a neutron star work, given that neutrons are electrically neutral particles? And even more intriguingly, why can neutrons inside a neutron star survive for millions of years, while a free neutron in space lasts only about 10 minutes? First of all, saying that neutrons have no electric charge isn't entirely accurate. A neutron is electrically neutral overall, composed of two down quarks, minus one third each, and one up quark, plus two-thirds, summing to zero. However, these quarks are not fixed in place. They constantly oscillate chaotically, creating a temporary electric dipole moment. If the neutron were a perfectly CP-symmetric particle, these fluctuations would cancel out. In physics, CP-symmetry combines two principles, charge conjugation, C, and parity, P. Charge conjugation means particles and antiparticles behave identically. Parity symmetry means if you reflect a system in a mirror, the laws of physics remain unchanged. If the neutron were fully CP symmetric, it would look and behave the same in a mirror or as antimatter. But this isn't the case. In 1964, the Cronin-Fitch experiment revealed CP violation in weak interactions. Two neutral particles mix to form fast and slow decaying states, each with distinct decay channels. However, about 0.2% of decay products were mismatched, showing that CP symmetry isn't conserved. This also helps explain the imbalance between matter and antimatter in our universe. Because neutral particles like mesons decay too quickly for precise measurements, physicists turn to neutrons. What they aim to measure is the neutron's electric dipole moment, a difference between the particle's center of mass and center of charge. If there's a displacement, it creates an electric vector, leading to a phenomenon called spin precession. The neutron is made of three charged quarks and possesses spin. Their internal motion gives rise to a magnetic moment, an intrinsic property that can't be eliminated. To reduce external noise during measurements, Experiments require metal shielding, a uniform magnetic field approximately one microtesla, and temperatures near absolute zero to prolong neutron lifetime. Measuring the electric dipole moment is extremely difficult, relying entirely on experimental sensitivity. The most accurate measurement so far, PSI Switzerland 2020, gives an upper bound of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 26 of O cometer. The actual value is likely even smaller, possibly down to 10 to the negative 31st power E times centimeter. Now, back to neutron stars. These are the most magnetized objects in the universe, yet the exact mechanism behind their magnetic fields remains unclear. Part of this uncertainty stems from our limited understanding of the star's internal composition. Still, we can hypothesize that the magnetic field originates from several factors. The magnetic moments of constituent particles, conservation of magnetic flux, and the presence of superconducting and superfluid matter inside the star. A neutron star forms from the gravitational collapse of a massive star. The extreme pressure forces electrons into protons, converting most of them into neutrons and forming a dense core nearly entirely made of neutrons. The rest is a plasma of protons and electrons. The speed of sound inside a neutron star can reach up to three quarters the speed of light, 225,000 kilometers per second, indicating enormous stiffness and density. This has led scientists to speculate that the core might consist of exotic matter like quark matter or unusual hadrons like tetraquarks, pentaquarks, or even hexaquarks. Magnetic fields arise from moving electric charges. Inside a neutron star, residual protons and electrons may form currents by moving through superconducting, zero resistance, or superfluid, no friction layers. These motions don't lose energy, allowing stable, long-lived electric currents. When combined with magnetic moments and flux conservation from the progenitor star, these currents can be amplified through a cosmic scale dynamo effect, essentially a turbocharged engine generating immense magnetic fields in neutron stars. A free neutron, once removed from a nucleus, 
survives for only about 10 minutes. After that, it decays into a proton, an electron, and an antineutrino. But there's a strange place in the universe where trillions upon trillions of neutrons have lasted for millions of years, maybe even longer than the lifetime of stars themselves. That place is a neutron star, the ultra-dense remnant left behind after a massive star explodes. So what's going on inside these stars? Why don't those neutrons decay, even though they're in an almost pure state with no protective shell of protons around them? The answer lies in two things, insane pressure and the Pauli exclusion principle. Inside a neutron star, matter is packed so tightly it's mind-blowing. Just one teaspoon of it would weigh as much as a mountain on Earth. Neutrons are squeezed so tightly together that there's literally no room left for them to transform into a proton and an electron. This is known as beta decay suppression by the Pauli exclusion principle, because all available quantum states for protons and electrons are already taken. If a neutron tries to decay, it would have to create a proton. But guess what? There's no room for that new proton to exist. So the process simply can't happen. In other words, neutrons aren't allowed to decay because there's nowhere for their decay products to go. A free neutron in space is like a lonely traveler, unbound, unrestricted, and after a short while, it just fades away. But a neutron inside a neutron star is different. It's not free at all. It's surrounded by trillions of other neutrons, crushed under extreme gravity, so intense that lifting your foot just one centimeter on its surface would require the force of two billion Earth gravities. In a normal environment, when a neutron decays into a proton and electron, those particles can freely escape. But inside a neutron star, there's no available space for those new particles, because all the lower energy levels are already full. That's where the Pauli principle kicks in. No two fermions can occupy the same quantum state. So if there's no empty quantum state left, the decay is blocked before it even begins. Think of it like this. You want to move to a new city, but every apartment is already taken. And the law doesn't allow you to crash at someone else's place. So even if you want to leave, you're stuck where you are. That's exactly what happens to neutrons in a neutron star. And not just because of quantum rules. Gravity itself plays a role in locking them in place. Even if a neutron did manage to decay, the resulting proton and electron would need to fight through an ocean of ultra-dense matter to find room to exist. And that's just not energetically possible. It's almost as if the universe is forcing neutrons to stay as they are, a kind of cosmic immortality by force. But don't think these stars are asleep. Neutron stars spin at mind-blowing speeds, blasting out intense X-rays and radio waves, and sometimes they even unleash giant flares that shake the fabric of space itself.